Hello, hello there. Hope you are having a wonderful day. Today we'll continue on our discussion in factors affecting drug activity. So if you haven't reviewed basic biopharmacology or the first part of this one, go ahead and watch those and come on back. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. All right, last time we had some um, topics, no review questions. So I'll start off this one with some review questions. How would delayed gastric emptying affect the rate of drug absorption? If you said decrease, you'd be correct. And that's because if the drug is in the stomach, it's not getting absorbed in the intestines. And it's also getting broken down by uh, the acid environment. Which patient would we consider body weight when dosing medication? Infants, children, emaciated, or obese? Morbidly obese, over 30% body fat. The correct answer here is, well, all of them. We always want to consider infant's body weight, children, too thin, and or too thick. Disease states. We'll talk about how disease states will affect ADME. So what you want to focus on is where it's taking place to identify which processy is being affected. So here in hepatic disease, that's going to affect the liver. So most likely that will affect M, metabolism. So as you recall from basic biopharmacology, Everything that's absorbed from the intestines goes to the liver first for first pass metabolism. And it acts as a checkpoint. But if the liver is not working, then everything is going to flood directly into the bloodstream before the liver has a chance to alter it. Hardening of the liver. And that will cause uh, jaundice. So as toxins build up in the body, they're not um, excreted. So bilirubin will deposit in your body. That's a waste product. And it'll give you a yellow appearance. Hepatitis, A, B, C, and D can affect the liver, causing cirrhosis. And since it is a virus, can lead to cancer but there's a bright side uh, your liver is really really resilient so if you give it time it can recover and it's the only organ in our body that's able to regenerate itself circulatory system so this is going to affect a lot of processes um, most likely all of them absorption once it's in the blood distribution now i can't get to the site of action if the liver is not getting a good blood supply then it can't do its job and then the kidney is affected by uh, blood pressure and circulatory system so you'll get decreased absorption less blood flow you'll get reduced uh hepatic and blood supply so all your organs are not getting enough uh, the blood. Decrease liver metabolism and decrease kidney excretion. So elimination will greatly be affected. Renal function. So most likely the excretion part of disposition. So decrease elimination. So this is both metabolism and excretion together. So definitely the drug will stay in your body a lot longer. Albumin. Albumin is a blood protein and it binds to acidic drug. So to remember, just use the alliteration. Albumin is for acid. So this is a blood protein that binds to most drug 
and regulates distribution of the drug. The opposite is oral so mucoid, they bind basic drug. So what's going to happen is you're going to get an increase of acid drug activity, but you're going to get a decrease of basic drug activity if you have uh, renal, renal issues. Creatinine clearance or complete creatinine clearance. So creatinine is a waste product, a nitrogen waste product that your liver I'm sorry, your kidneys need to excrete. However, it's high, then it's a sign that your kidney is not functioning properly and not clearing the creatinine as needed. Thyroid. So the thyroid produces thyroid hormone and uh, calcitonin. In this case, we're going to talk about the thyroid hormone, which regulates overall metabolism. So changes in motility, yep. So if you have increased motility, that's gonna lead to low absorption. If you have a slower metabolism, then there's more time for your intestines to absorb the drug. Review question. Albumin binds which type of drug? So if you recall uh, the mnemonic device, just use alliteration. So albumin is for acidic drugs. How would hyperthyroidism affect absorption? So hyper, increase. So more than normal. So that means you're going to have a higher metabolism. And in general, uh, rate and amount will increase with higher metabolism, just like children. Adverse drug reaction. So when you take a drug, it can cause uh, many effects, some positive and some negative. We'll focus on some of the adverse uh, drug reaction. Central nervous system effect. So affecting the brain and the brain stem, well, drugs can either stimulate the central nervous system or suppress it. So for stimulated effects, stimulation effects, you'll have agitation, confusion, and hallucination. For the depressive effects, those ones are probably easier to recall because when you're dizzy, you're going to slow down. When you are drowsy, you're definitely going to slow down. When you're sedated, you're going to slow down. And if you're in a coma, yeah, definitely you are down and out. So it's easier to recall the depressive effects on the central nervous system. And then anything that's not depressive, most likely going to be a stimulant. Hepatotoxicity, toxic to the liver. So many common drugs, everyday common over-the-counter drugs that are toxic to the liver. So the most common is Tylenol, abbreviated APAP for APAP. So the maximum for healthy adults, no more than 3,000 milligrams per day. And if you drink alcohol, you should probably avoid Tylenol altogether. Next is aspirin. That is abbreviated a essay, acetyl salicylic acid. Isononize, normally abbreviated INH. It is an anti tuberculin medication, and usually on it anywhere from 6 to 12 months. You don't want tuberculosis nowadays with the emergence of extended drug resistant uh, TB. But the prolonged use may damage your liver so you'll have to go in get it checked phenytoin anti-seizure med all these items are can be toxic to the liver methotrexate is a chemo med
allergic reaction, hypersensitivity. So an allergy is just your immune system overreacting. So for example, uh, you're allergic to peanuts. So your body wants to prevent you from inhaling or coming in contact with any more. So it may cause anaphylaxis. So anaphylaxis is rapid onset. And ana means to bring together. So you'll get swelling, which brings your airways together and uh, can cause death. Antibodies will be produced uh, against the allergen and then you'll release histamine. Histamine is a protein and anytime your body uh, senses an antigen, uh, one of its trigger for allergies is to release histamine. And it'll continue to release histamine until it reaches a high enough level where you'll get a reaction. So there, it must meet a threshold before you get the swelling, runny eyes, itchiness. Allergy reactions can take weeks to develop. So anaphylaxis is instant, whereas the histamine levels need to rise to a certain point before you get a reaction. So for um, infants and toddlers, when you're introducing new foods, you want to make sure you spread them out uh, three, four days apart. The good thing with infants is they usually don't get anaphylaxis shock from uh, food allergies. They usually get a, a, get a rash. So since anaphylaxis brings the airways together, we got to administer something that will open up the airway. So epinephrine, a.k.a. adrenaline, will stimulate your flight or fight response, your sympathetic nervous system, opening up the airway. Antihistamine, so we're trying to bring this histamine level down. That way, there's no longer reaction. As long as histamine levels are low, it doesn't hit that threshold and causes problems. And then to open up the airway, we may administer a bronchodilator. Gastrointestinal effects. So some drugs may cause constipation. Some drugs cause diarrhea. So if it causes constipation, your absorption is going to go way up. If it causes diarrhea, uh, like some antibiotics, then you're going to get low absorption. Uh, what causes constipation? Uh, opioids. So you have opioid-induced constipation. Some drugs cause anorexia, stops your appetite. So I think opioids, stimulants uh, like um, ADHD meds, Adderall, uh, Concerta can, can suppress your appetite. Uh, many drugs will cause nausea and vomiting. So if you're not used to opioids, strong opioids like morphine, can cause instant projectile vomiting. Uh, constipation and diarrhea. So for antacids, aluminum uh, antacids, in this case aluminum hydroxide, will cause constipation. And the antacid magnesium hydroxide will cause diarrhea. So one way to remember this is mag makes you sag. You're going to get that diarrhea. And then the opposite, a big old aluminum brick. Nephrotoxicity. So toxic to the kidneys. Aminoglycoside, type of antibiotic. So gentamicin is a representative antibiotic. It'll be damaging to the kidneys. And for those military personnel, your vitamin M for Motrin. That's toxic to the kidneys. So be careful. Um, if you're starting to get dark urine, Coca-Cola urine, uh, it may have already done its damage. For NSAIDs like ibuprofen, you should limit its use to um, just a few weeks to handle those symptoms. If you're using it chronically, then you may end up getting uh, kidney failure. Hematological effects. Some drugs thin the blood, whereas some drugs make it thicker and stickier. Right. So birth control. So women on oral contraceptives are recommended to not smoke cigarettes. Cigarette smokes 
uh, thickens the blood and it will increase your risk of having clots and then having that clot move to your brain for a stroke or your lung for an embolism. Anticoagulants, of course, they're designed to thin the blood to prevent heart attacks and prevent strokes. However, other drugs like uh, aspirin and of course alcohol, ethyl alcohol, will also thin the blood and may lead to uh, uh, bleeding or clotting problems. Bone marrow depression. So within your bone marrow, your red bone marrow, that's where you have the blood stem cells that produces all the different lineages of blood cells. White blood cells, red blood cells, platelets. Antineoplastic agents, as you recall, those are going to be cancer meds that prevent, so they're against new formation. So not only do the cancers uh, get suppressed, but also your bone marrow. So you're going to have anemia. Teratogenicity. So terato literally translate into monster and genicity is making. So this refers to uh, birth effects due to drugs. So a lot of different drugs can affect uh, the growing fetus. So make sure you check with your doctor or pharmacist. One example was the thalidomide disaster in Europe. Uh, fortunately, it didn't reach its way to the United States. But in the first trimester, women have a nausea and vomiting. And thalidomide was a good drug that they use for nausea and vomiting. And we had a whole generation uh, born with severe birth defects. Which of the following is not a sign of central nervous depression? So not a sign. So drowsiness, are you going to go down? Yeah. Hallucination, are you going to? I'm not sure. But dizziness, yeah, I'm going to go down. And a coma, well, I'm already down and out with a coma. So the only one left that's not depressive is going to be hallucination. So that is caused by a central nervous system stimulant. Anaphylaxis shock can occur over days. This is false. Anaphylaxis is usually quick, a really quick onset, whereas building up histamine levels, remember, can take a couple of days to develop. And once you hit that threshold, then you'll get your allergy reaction. So because of that, when you're introducing food to your child, just make sure you spread them out four or five days apart so you know exactly what's causing the allergy. Which of the following is not toxic to the liver, hepatotoxic? So we have ibuprofen, acetaminophen, aspirin, asanize. So we have IBU, we have APAP, we have ASA, and we have INH. So the answer is Motrin, vitamin M. So all you uh, veterans out there, just be careful. Uh, check your kidney functions for ibuprofen. Everything else damaging to the liver. Match a drug with its hematological effect. Birth control pill. So women on birth control, oral contraceptives should not smoke because of the risk of blood coagulation. Excessive bleeding by their name, anticoagulants, prevent clotting. So yes, you're going to bleed. And drugs that are against new growth and in your bone marrow, your red bone marrow, you have um, your blood cells dividing and forming. All right, that wasn't too bad. So um, we built upon human variability. We talked about the drug, average drug reaction and drugs affecting uh, adm &E. So up next, we'll conclude our lecture on factors affecting drug activity in part three or three. We'll talk about drug-drug interaction, on drug-diet interaction.
So once again, uh, thank you for joining us. And we'll see you again for part three.